So here I'm just going to go over to my Lecture 10 folder. And in Lecture 10 folder, once you've unzipped it, you're going to find a LAS data Burnaby dot zip. And these are LIDAR, um, four LIDAR files from Burnaby, British Columbia. And I'm just going to right click on that and unzip all of those. So I'll go to my extract all and I want to unzip them into the lecture 10 folder into the folder called last data Burnaby and I'll extract them. And in here it has output and then we see a number of last files. So each of these is a last file. Um, lecture 10, last data Burnaby output like so. Just going to bring this over here a bit. I just have these two large. And this is the sizes of them right here. We have one which is 50 megabytes in size, and the other ones are about 8, 5, and um, about 1 megabyte in size. So just, just under 70 megabytes in total for these um, four last files. Now if I go to Arc GIS Pro, and I've already connected to my Lecture 10 folder, but I have to refresh that so it can see the unzipped last data Burnaby folder. There it is. So there's last data Burnaby. And I go into output, and here are my last files. Now, if you don't see anything here, it means you don't have the extension loaded. So go to project in the menu, licensing, and then check for 3D Analyst being there. If it says no to the 3D Analyst, you may have to go to configure your licensing options and then find it in here and click yes on it or something to enable that particular um, extension. But we require the 3D Analyst extension when we're working with the last files, as we'll see. So I'll just go back now, assuming that's all fixed. So I'm just going to bring in this first last file, just as an example. We can look at individual last files like this. And notice the, um, beside the last file, the, the little icon shows an airplane, a bunch of points, and a beam. It's hard to see there, isn't it? But you can see that as I zoom in. So that's, an, that's the way a last file looks. And the beam here is showing a scan line. So it's scanning from there to there, turning the beam, beam on and off. This is what's a, a little illustration of what I just showed you on the PowerPoint slide. You may get a transformation warning. Just click OK to that. And then it will show us the last file. And if I zoom in, I'll see individual points in there. If I click on one of those points, it'll give me return one of three. So for that point, there were three, three returns. If I click on a different point, um, two of three returns. To zoom in really close to see any individual ones, if you click on this one. That was return one of three. Three of three, three of three, etc. So each one of these points has a return associated with it. Now, it can be difficult to understand what these are showing and what a return means. But if we look at the information in here, we have also an elevation. So that elevation is meters above sea level. So every point has an elevation. The darker ones have higher elevations, and the lighter green ones and yellow ones have um, smaller elevations. So at the same time we do this, I'm going to go to Insert in the menu. And uh, I should say map, sorry, yeah, insert. 
new map and I want to make a new local scene. So this is now a three-dimensional scene. And I'm going to drag the same last file into here. Transformation comes up again. Just say OK. And it's going to draw the last file in three dimensions for us. And I'm going to turn off the world elevation ground surface just down here, just so I can see everything. There we go. So I had to turn off the elevation surfaces ground. And it kind of looks interesting in that when we look at the last file in a 3D scene, it looks more non-point like, doesn't it? Um, and that's because it, ag it aggregates the values of the points. And if you zoom in, you'll see the individual points again. And if you zoom out, you'll see how it aggregates points of similar value to make it look more like a continuous surface. Let's have a look through this particular last scene. So I'm going to click on my um, Appearance tab. Uh, one thing we can do is lighting and shading. So eye dome lighting. You can change the change the way that looks. And there's nothing wrong with this strength. Gives you more contrast or less contrast in your last data. So you can do some things there. So back at, we can so we saw the lighting and shading here. Um, you can also modify the display limit if you want. So depending on how many points are in your last data set. So if we check out the properties of this last data set. And we go to the source. This particular last data set has 1,867,072 individual returns or points. So right now the display limit is at 800,000. If I want to change that, I could change that to a million. put a comma there, enter, and then it will redraw. The more, obviously, the more um, points allowed in the display limit, the more detail you're going to get, but also the slower it will actually display your last data set. And if I go to max density as well, See, that's even slower. So I might just go bring, bring that back down to the middle and bring that down to, you know, 800,000 back to the default. So let's have a look through this. Again, this is a three-dimensional data set. So I'm going to click on the View tab over here. I'm going to go to Profile Viewing, and I'm going to create a profile by clicking on the Create button right here. Then I'm just going to draw a line. And you'll see the outline of the line. It's very, very light, very hard to see. It's in orange, and I just did it straight across like this. And then I'll double-click to finish that. And what it's going to do is show me a cross-section in three dimensions of what that looks like. So notice it opens up a scene window. And now it's drawing that cross section. So here I can see that in that cross section I have trees, and these look like um, it's hard to say exactly what they look like, but look somewhat deciduous in nature. Uh, there's some sort of coniferous tree uh, bush of some kind, and then here's a building. You can see the roof line very easily, and there's another um, deciduous type tree over here. And you can use the navigation tools at the bottom if you want to move around, look up and down on that, that particular um, data set and whatnot. 
And again, you can go back and oh, it closed the entire map. I need to open that scene back up. There we go. So that profile viewing tool is only available in the 3D scene. This is a local scene. And I can do a transect or through any, any direction I want just by creating a profile. So if I want to go north to south in this treat area, like that. And that'll continue to draw here, showing me that north-south profile or cross-section. In this scene, when I can move around like that, I can zoom in or zoom out. Oh, I close it again. Oh, sorry about that. I meant there's a small X in the right-hand side that, uh, where you close those from. So if you have a cross-section, you'll see up in the right corner a little X. That's the one I meant to click, and I keep clicking to close the entire scene for some reason. So just going back out, and then that draw. Now, to really get a, the best view of this, we can look at this, since it's a 3D view, in different directions or forms. So you see down here you have a navigation in the bottom left corner and there's a little up arrow to control. And so click on the up arrow. That allows us to control. So the middle thing controls the the uh, angle of the camera. So if I go like that for example I can see out and then I can just zoom back until I see my particular scene here. I went a bit too far. Um, and then I want to zoom in here to have a look at that. And then I can rotate around there as well, like so. And you can zoom in and zoom out. I'm just waiting for it to redraw here. I might just decrease the amount of points here, maybe to 300,000. See if I can get it to display uh, quicker. Not much. So let's go back there. Back to the defaults. Now we can also filter out different returns. Let's say right now the default is all points. What if we just want to see ground points? Well, I can click on the last points filter, just show ground. So these are the ground returns.
and we can see we have very flat area or very flat regions in the front here and then there's obviously some sort of um, just going across there in the upper quarter streams stream and this of course was the building outline so you couldn't have ground points there because they're covered the ground is covered and I can just again just try different views of that and that gives me the ground points the other way I can visualize ground is I can go uh, I can click on symbology here and say show elevation and that's going to draw a triangular irregular network from the last points using the current filter for the last points which is right here which is ground We can see the same thing if we go back to map, to our first map. So with this last data set, I can, again, filter out ground in two dimensions now, so we're not in the 3D scene, but in the 2D scene, and then click Symbology Elevation, and it's going to show the elevation raster. Not raster, but as a tin, triangular, regular network, and you can see those kind of triangular facets as I zoom in between points. So that can show very detailed ground level information. Clearly it'll be more detailed where there's less trees. If I filter it to show non-ground, just trees, or anything but ground, this is what it gives me here. Um, also in the symbology, you can look at if you want the slope, you can choose slope, and it creates a slope. Image, or triangular regular network. And here reds are higher slope, and greens are lower slope. And even aspect. So that's the direction of the slope. Um, you can also contour if you have your elevation data, for example. If we go back just to elevation, I just want ground back to ground there. Then I want to, let's say, show contours or draw contours. Here I'll put a contour interval of 0 0.25 and hit enter and there I have a detailed contour map. So with the last data set you can do quite a bit. Going back to my scene, I'll just filter all points back on. and symbology back to um, return. There's the point cloud. So without the aggregation, you can you can you can go right through this point cloud. See it from far away. Bring it towards you. Zoom out a little bit.
zoom back in. And you can see structures. Look at that structure here. You can really see the structure of an individual tree with this type of a technique. A little hard to see there. You kind of have to get the right view. But here's the stem, and there's um, branches going up and down all the way there. You can see the structure of those trees. So you can actually see all the trunks of the forest here. And then the lower elevation parts right down here. And you can go through the point cloud. I can see, for example, here as I'm going through that this is, these are conifers, and they're easily distinguished from deciduous trees just by the, the shape of the tree themselves, you know. So this is a deciduous tree right up here. And you can see that deciduous, conifer, conifer, etc. So you can get a lot of information from last data. So the last thing we will do here is look at combining all four of these last layers into a single last data set. So in my lecture 10 folder, subfolder, last data Burnaby that we unzipped, output, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new last data set. So new last data set. And I'll just call it Burnaby. Like so. And nothing happens. So in order to add the data sets, we have to go to the properties for that last layer. So I right click in properties. And I'll see general, nothing. Statistics, nothing. Last files, nothing. So here I have to say add files or add folders. So if I have a folder with a bunch of last files, like I have here, I'll just add the folder output. So I'll click on add folders. I'll go navigate to my, and I have it in temp here, my lecture 10 folder. And then last data Burnaby, output, and I'll just choose output like that. I'm choosing a folder. And it will put in those last data sets. And it tells us some important things here. For example, the point count of each one. So remember that one we've been working with has a million point eight points in it. That's quite a large one. And there's slight, other ones are slightly smaller. The one we're working with is quite large because it has that forested region in it. The other ones um, aren't necessarily having as much forest in them. So I have that. Then I click on the statistics right here. And I can see the percentage of points across all my last layers that are within each class classified uh, return. So ground has that many, low vegetation has that many. So low vegetation and ground have the most, um, uh, not, well, not quite the most, but the second largest and high vegetation has the largest amount altogether. And um, building 70,000, and then you have some other ones like road surface, and that will, of course, depend on what you have in terms of the, the, um, the region. The attributes tab um, just tells us the return number. So we have, in some cases, up to five returns. So five returns is the largest number of returns we'll have for any given point. Um, the returns tab tells us how many returns are first returns, second returns, third returns, fourth, fifth, um, and etc. And nothing under classification, nothing to worry about there. So once we say that, we can just click OK. And then drag in the Burnaby LASD, which is the um, Burnaby last data set. And that's the entire Burnaby last data set. And again, we can do the same things that we learned just with a single last data set. For example, symbology, we can choose elevation or um, return or classified. So here we have the values um, or the classification, the, the information classes for each of the returns according to color. Uh, likewise in the scene view, 
we can bring the last data set in there. I'll just remove the original last one just so it doesn't cause so many issues with um, uh, time to draw. Go back to catalog, bring in the Burn Burnaby last, the entire Burn Burnaby last data set. So you can see that there. And we can see what we've added mainly is uh, some areas over here, building structures. I'll just zoom in, go a bit closer down there, look upwards, zoom in a bit more. Here we can see that coniferous vegetation that is conical. You can see some recreation complex here, uh, some more vegetation. some conical ones, and a deciduous tree there as well. Or maybe those are all, those are probably all actually, um, yeah, probably a deciduous there. And of course you can explore that more. Certainly there, the conical shape of a coniferous tree. The oval shape of the crown of a um, deciduous tree. And of course, um, this region in Canada is the home to the only species that's an evergreen deciduous tree native to Canada, Arbutus menzi. You can look it up if you want. Okay, so that's all we'll look at in terms of last data sets.